Okay, here is another review. My computer's really loud, I'm sorry. Why are you doing this to me? What's going on? Dude, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? That's the whole video. I'm just gonna say what's going on, dude. You're gonna have to deal with the sound of my computer's fan going on. So here's your review. Today I'm gonna be reviewing Michael Pollan's Cooked Natural History of Transformation. Um, this book was published by Penguin Press in April of 2013. It has 468 pages and it has just got like 2005 ratings in Goodreads, but when I decided to review this, it had at least six less than that. So I'm reviewing it. Michael Pollan, he is a food writer in general. Most of the books that I think, yeah, like all the books that he's written about has been about food in some way or how we get our food. Um, his most famous work is Omnivore's Dilemma. To be honest, that is my favorite work of his. So this book is really talking about cooking and exactly how we as humans are, are, are connected to cooking and how cooking connects us to our food, our communities, and the world in general, and how our modern way of approaching food is represents our fractured view of the world and with each other. This book is separated into four parts representing all of the you know classical elements fire, water, air, and earth. And fire it is really elaborating on the concept of like barbecuing or just cooking over a fire. Water it talks about really how we boil food. In air it talks about baking and specifically bread and earth represents fermentation and the book covers each of those methods of cooking at least three different ways so it touches on culturally how we feel about those things and how oh, historically those things have connected us together and then also he looks at the anthropological aspect of it of exactly how did us as humans figure out how to use, let's say, bacteria and microbes to help us with our cooking, or exactly what cooking something a little bit extra has done for humanity and taking something that was traditionally, you know, not as edible or we would have to eat it and then let it digest in our bodies for a long time, but once we cook it, we are actually, you know, how cooking has helped us start the digestion process of those foods outside the body before we put it in our bodies and also exactly how how it is really is a testament to humanity that we have been able to figure out how to use the natural processes of the natural world and incorporate it into our, our lives and our cooking and how beneficial it has been to us. Um, and then also he talks about how really because we kind of sanitize food, we've cut out what really made certain foods really good for us but we cut it out and, and for efficiency sake or for you know to increase the profit margin or to just make more of it that it, it really we kind of actually cut out the benefits of it by cutting out the you know the um, unsanitary part and it was a very interesting point of how different cultures view different foods the fermentation one was interesting because you know what we consider rotted is actually different from culture to culture depending on exactly what we like about it i did like this book it was very informative, just like Omnivore's Dilemma, but I enjoyed Omnivore's Dilemma a bit more. Uh, I felt this one was a little bit, I don't know, I guess I was saying a little bit preachy, a little bit self-righteous, I guess. All of his examinations or his, like, you should guys should try this too, it, like, it's kind of hinged on the fact that for, for people to, regular people to do this, you kind of need to have a bit of money and a lot of time, and it's not really that feasible to do that in our day-to-day -day lives. He he went around to different barbecues and you know he tried barbecuing and making a good barbecue and then you know making good stew and baking all that kind of stuff. You can do that but then I mean he made his own barbecue pit in his backyard and that's what he regularly does now and he tries to incorporate cooking as much as he can in his life and he has that great luxury but I can't just put a barbecue pit in my backyard. This book kind of fell a little bit flat for me because you know the conclusions of this book maybe the call to action isn't as simple for some people as it is for others. I mean he's a writer he probably has his, his schedule's flexible, as long as I'm not gonna say he's not busy, but his schedule's flexible, and it's like, I wish I could do this stuff, but I, I did like this. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. 
it's good. Um, certain, certain elements kind of fell flat for me in it, especially the little sense of call to action, because it seemed like everyone you talked to were yuppies, except the barbecue people. But, well, and you talked to a nun. I'm not going to call her a yuppie. Probably still going to buy this book because it has interesting information that I would like, and I'll definitely probably give this as a gift to a particular person that I know that loves to cook. He cooks all the time, and he is very, very healthy. He's healthier than I am. So, you'll like this book. I don't know. If you like Michael Poland, you'll, it's a good read, and if you want to learn more about cooking, I do suggest this. Um, anyway, that was my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day. Bye! I did this whole review while sitting over a bag of potato chips. I'm a hypocrite.